when Peter denied Christ three times, and what was the significance? And was the three times asking by Christ of Peter where he loved him? Uh, is that to compensate for the three times he denied him? And I say no. Well, um, Peter was a special uh, person. I'm sure he was a good Jew at one time. He did the bar mitzvah, memorized the, the first five books of the Bible because those might have been the only books of the then or others might be. But of course, much more than the John were then. Uh, they wrote them in their time, so you know, uh, uh, the experiences they had, they wrote in the zone. Uh, but some way Peter fell away or he gravitated to fishing. And um, to be a fisherman, you have to be brave. Going out, out in the ocean or out in the sea, fishing, boat could capsize, a storm could whip up and you know, you drown and so forth. Or he might have survived several storms. And so he has a self confidence that is built from his human experiences. And um, he carried a sword, of course, in Catopia and had this uh, serpent here, and she was memory uh, back. And um, he said, You know, Lord Jesus, although all men would save you, I will not. And Jesus loved me in the and he said, You know, before the cock, uh, those three times, you will deny me. Now, um, Cock normally crew, cocks around the world normally crew, crow around at various times. Maybe starting at five o'clock in the morning. And um, some might, you know, do it one o'clock, whatever. But before that, the first cock could crow that they could hear around where Jesus was, uh, Peter would be nine three times. But note carefully that Peter and the other disciple of Jesus loved were the only ones who went into the trial of Jesus. The other disciples of Jesus' love had contacts and he was able to go in. And he went and spoke to other people and got Peter in. And uh, while Peter was going in, the young lady said, Aren't you one of his disciples? He said, No. And two other times he said, No. And then, you know, the cock crew and I guess Christ looked around and said, See what I told you? I know it, man. You know, I'm God, okay? But it doesn't mean that, of course, he did not love him. I mean, which one of us, if by just saying something, we could save our lives? Because he never knew. They might have killed him. Uh, he might have been uh, crucified too. Who knows? Um, but he denied him. And so, immediately after Christ died, and the, Peter went back fishing um, and took some of the disciples with him. And back to his old, old profession, whereas he should have gone out preaching, you know, the gospel and so on. And uh, Jesus came out at the beach and um, where they were fishing, and uh, he said, "Have you caught anything as yet?" They said, "No." They were fishing on the left side. Jesus said, "Fish on the right side, and you will catch." And um, they did, and of course they they caught for a multitude of fish. And perhaps the point that Jesus was making is that, you know. I call you to be a fisher of men, and you're fishing fish. Why don't you fish on the right side? The side that I have told you to go on and work people and teach the Jews that I'm Jesus and, and so on, let them accept me, let them, you know, add on me to their religion, and everything would be great. Um, and so the discussion came up do you love me more than these? And people speculated it's a fish, um, the, the vessels, a variety of other things. But um, the, the words that we're using will eliminate a lot of things. It couldn't be fish, it couldn't be his work, it couldn't be the ships, it couldn't be, you know, uh, a lot of things. Um, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you agape or me? No. I, 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 I agree. There are about four, at least four words for love. There's agape, or there's a struggle. Philadelphia, Philadelphia, and um, Eros. And um, each has its place. Eros is something between husband and wives. Um, store goes between parents and children. Um, uh, Philadelphia is between you know, brothers and sisters. Anybody, you know, your brother, not necessarily blood brothers, but any person around, you can love them in a friendly way. Uh, and that way, they're Gapio. 
it seemed to be a higher love, and perhaps um, it might also mean love to God or something like that. Because he asked him to love me more than these, it had to be that he's God, and uh, you know he's asking him, you know that sort of thing. Um, but in the past, I think people have asked Peter, who am I? What people say, I am. what do you believe? I said you're the son of God, and said you know what, the Holy Spirit had not told you that. Because, I mean, Christ was born of Mary, and everybody saw him grow up. And uh, how can you now claim that he's God and he lived before? And when everybody, uh, there's no reincarnation with every birth. We all, the zygote, uh, the ovum, the sperm, and so on, you know, the whole uh, reproduction thing. And, and so it was, it, it called for a lot of faith to believe that he was the God and so on. Um, but, when Christ was speaking, Christ said, use the word agape twice. He said, I feel you, you, which was in keeping with the subconscious uh, love he has for Jesus because it, it, it borders on being a friend, a good friend, I like you, and so on. But it's beyond that, he's the God, he's the Savior, and so on. So Jesus realizing that he does not have a Holy Spirit moment again. So he asked him now, using the same word he was using. So he said, Peter, do you feel it on me? And he said, Lord, you know, I feel you on you. He said, don't feed my sheep. Because that is what the commission was. They were to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he went back to fishing. And uh, you might say they needed money and take care of stuff. And, and, and it is clear that uh, God had made a, a way, a provision for them to be um, taken care of. Because in the old system, there is the type. And they will bring, you know, enough uh, offering and uh, lamb and, and cow and so on, and uh, the, the priest would get some and so forth, and, and now, since that service is over, they would bring cash, and there would be money so that they could live on and so on. That was the beginning of the ministry and church uh, tithing and, and, and so on. Um, so it wasn't necessary that you have to ask him three times. If the first time Jesus had said, Peter, do you feel you on me? Peter would have said, sure, I feel you on you, and the conversation would have ended, and would have given me the command, feed my sheep. But even the second time he had said, Peter, fill uh, me, but he kept saying, Agapio twice, Jesus. Peter, do you Agapio me? And he said, you know, I fill you. So Peter used the word fill three times, Jesus used uh, Agapio twice, and then finally, on the third time he said, do you fill uh, me? So that uh, there's no significance with the number of times, and it had nothing to do with, he has to confirm three times that he does love him. But what I find is that, um, the, the Greek uh, um, has the multiple loves, and the Spanish also has many words of love. There's a uh, amo and there's a uh, quier, uh, quiero, amar and quiero, quier, quier. Um, the French has just one word, just like English. Um, and, 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 and go into the history, you see that France and Britain had something happening amongst them and so on. Um, but the Latin, and although French has Latin, and Latin has influenced English, but we just have this one word, love. So, um, you know, when they say, love is thou me, without going into the Greek, um, we just have one word, love. I love my dog, I love my chair, I love my cat, and so on. Uh, but we know that you can't love the car with the same love you love your children or God or your wife or the neighbor. But the Greeks have it specific. And um, and again, in English, if one gets into the spirit of the scripture and don't go by just words but by the concepts, they should get up without even having to go into a Greek discourse. But uh, for those who are not getting it, sometimes it's better to uh, clarify things.